So, Junko, welcome to this webinar. And then, Thank uh, you. <laughs> welcome to the Global Exposure New Delhi. And then, uh, for the benefit of Indian students in this COVID period, we would like to know more about the Northern Iceland College, its location, and about its courses. Yes, definitely. Um, so, um, I guess we should start with where we are. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. So, we are located on Vancouver Island. Um, so, we're on the very um, west end of Canada and we're right across the water from Vancouver. I'm sure everybody knows where Vancouver is. Um, and um, we are about halfway up on that island. Um, if you come from Vancouver, it'll take you about 20 minutes on a flight. Um, if you take the ferry, it's a little bit longer, about an hour and a half to get across the water. Um, and uh, where our campuses are um, right now, we have about 75,000 people who live um, in Comox Valley. That's the city name of the city that where the main campus is. Yeah, okay. and it's a really nice place because um, a lot of people come to Comox Valley to not just live, um, but to experience sort of more of a Canadian experience. Um, and uh, it's a really nice place because we're sandwiched by oceans and mountains and we have a lot of not just outdoor activities but um, really mild weather and great view and yeah so we are um, with the exception of COVID-19 that's going on right now generally speaking by this time of the year we have a lot of people visiting us from lots of different parts of the world. Zungo, what are the other campuses? Tell me about that also. Yes, definitely. So the main campus is Comox Valley Campus, but um, north of that um, is a Campbell River Campus. So that's our second campus, generally um, speaking, for international students. It's about uh, 35 minutes north of Comox Valley Campus. Um, and then the third campus right now is Port Alberni. Port Alberni is the um, um, southern um, side of Comox Valley and uh, it houses a few um, programs. So depending on what programs you choose at what time of the year, you may be um, placed in Comox Valley, Campbell River or Port Alberni. Great, great. So Junko, just tell me about the undergraduate programs which mm -hmm. uh, this NIC is offering. Yes, so for undergraduate programs, um, we have a lot of different types of programs, not just a one year certificate or two year diploma, but we also have a four year degree program. So if you wanted to specialize in something and then finish your education within two years, then we have programs such as uh, digital design and development, associative arts and sciences. Um, we also have um, engineering certificate. Um, we have tourism and hospitality diploma programs. And we have a few other programs in human services and trades, such as uh, social work, early childhood uh, education, and also um, industrial automation. Now, um, one th nice thing about um, going to a college in British Columbia is that a lot of the courses, or I should say all of the courses at North Island College are recognized by all of the institutions within the province of British Columbia. So that means if you wanted to start off with a diploma or associate of arts program or science program, which is only two year program, uh, but decide that you would rather go into a university or you would like to go and complete a degree program, but you don't quite have the grades to get into the university right away then you can start at North Island College and we have a guaranteed admission agreement with the University of Victoria. So a majority of our students transfer after successful two, year, uh, two years at North Island College, they transfer over to University of Victoria. Now we also do have other universities that you can transfer to, although we do not have guaranteed agreement, uh, guaranteed admission agreements, our advisors will help you choose the right courses so that you can seamlessly transfer. And our students' second choice tends to be UBC, University of British Columbia, or otherwise SFU, Simon Fraser University. Yeah, so you have a lot of different options. What are the 
good four year full fledged undergraduate program which you are offering sorry say that again ajay four year undergraduate bachelor degree program um four year uh, bachelor degree program yes i totally forgot to mention that thank you um so um we have a, a school of business at north island college that not only offers that one year certificate or two year degree uh, two year diploma program but we also offer four year degree program and so for students it's a really nice option they can choose to stay and then complete a degree program and students often do that, especially if they found some really good co-op placement or some really good connections with employers, and they would like to continue working with them so that they can advance in their skills and in their career. Um, alternatively, if they wanted to finish within two years and then maybe transfer to another university, then they can do that as well. Yeah. Thank you. Tell me the, what is the basic requirement for getting admission into the NIC? Yes, um, so the basic requirements into NIC is that number one, you have a high school graduation. Um, number two, you have English proficiency, um, which I will detail in a minute. And then um, depending on the programs, some of the programs will of course require some math um, from um, from grade, um, grade 11, 12, depending on which curriculum you've gone through, um, and of course, some science courses. Now, for English requirement, generally speaking, just like any other institutions, we accept IELTS and TOEFL um, with the, uh, for IELTS with a score of uh, 6.0 overall. Uh, with no band less than 5.5. Or if you do TOEFL IBT, it will be uh, 80, I believe, yeah, 80. Um, but I understand also that you don't really have access to that face-to-face -face exam right now. And also online exams can be a little bit difficult. So students can also take um, Duolingo English test as an alternative if they wish to apply for the um, non-student uh, direct stream option for the study permit. And if you do take Duolingo exam, then um, the passing score is 105. Tungu, uh, that uh, Duolingo examination is uh, eligible for getting the visa for the study purpose? For, um, we have um, received a message from um, IRCC that um, it's not accepted for um, the uh, student direct stream or otherwise called SDS um, because SDS still stays with the same IELTS requirement. However, for non-SDS um, um, stream, yes, it is um, available for students. Yeah. For a study purposes, study visa mm -hmm. purposes. Okay. Yes, definitely. Yeah, and in terms of the cost, it's a little bit more reasonable as well. And the result is usually released to you within about 48 hours. Yes. And then um, all the results can be sent electronically to us. Great, great. Mm -hmm. so, Zunko, tell me about the co-op concept and what, mm -hmm. are the, what are the programs which you have for, with the co-op mm -hmm. option? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to um, integrate all the co-op and internship and um, practicum together because everybody tends to use the yeah. words interchangeably. Um, so generally speaking in, um, in Canada, when we say co-op, co-op is a work term, work term that's attached to um, an undergraduate program. Whereas internship tends to be um, something that's attached to the postgraduate programs, um, such as post degree diplomas or graduate diplomas. Um, so, with our undergraduate programs, uh, we have either co op or practicum attached to each one of them, with the exception of Associate of Arts and Associate of Science programs. So, because these two programs are purely academic programs and they're designed for you to transfer into four-year degree program that it does not really come with the um, work term and also it's not specific to a subject area either whereas everything else that we have at in our institution have co-op or practicum so students would work and um, if, if it's co-op then students would work for four months 
full time, usually during the summertime. And you will get paid the market value of what you are doing from the employer. And you will gain really valuable experience in Canadian workforce um, and also in the area that you're studying. So um, it's a really great opportunity. Some students try to sort of wiggle their way out of co-op and go just into academic, but I strongly recommend students to do co-op because um, in Canada, getting a job, I'm sure that many of the new students are coming to Canada with the idea that they will study and also work um, in a long, for a long term in Canada. And in order to gain employment in Canada, it's really important that you have work experience and also good reference from those work experience employers before graduating. So, and then for other programs that says practicum, oftentimes in our program guide, means that um, practicum is a, a must component of the program. So you don't have any way to choose something different. You have to complete those hours in order to graduate because it's also a mandate from the government or from the licensing body to do those hours. Now, there are some programs that do not say um, uh, co-op or practicum. For example, digital design and development program. It's a fantastic program, but it does not say practicum or co-op. The reason being that it's such a career focused program that the, um, the work component is already amalgamated into the curriculum. So you don't really have to worry about attending an extra pra uh, practicum or extra co-op. As you go through the course, you will get exposed to clients, you get exposed to projects, you will get exposed to teamwork with other programmers or other designers, so that by the time you graduate, you already have the job ready skills. Yes, so. You could just clarify the, what exactly the difference between co-op, internship, and practicum. Mm -hmm. So co-op is a government um, funded program um, and so um, and it's attached to undergraduate program. So when you take up a co-op program, for example, in our business program, that means that your employer is partly subsidized by the government to provide you the training, but also gain um, workforce, you know, work the labor from you. So that's what co-op is, and usually the requirement is minimum of four months full-time work. Now, internship, um, as I mentioned, is attached more to post-degree diplomas, postgraduate studies, and it's not a mandated, um, it's not mandated by the government in any way, um, generally speaking. Um, however, um, most of the time, internship is anywhere from about um, three weeks to four months, depending on the program. And again, it is the same thing, you go and you work. Now, one nice thing about internship that's attached to our post-degree diploma programs is that it's a little bit shorter um, in length. However, because of where students are and um, how our community is, most of the students are paid. Whereas if you're in a big city and you have to do internship, because the concept of internship is already um, built into the workforce, and also because the employers do not get funded by the government, oftentimes students will be doing an unpaid internship. So it's a nice news for students that are coming to us that even when they're attending internship, they're able to um, gain um, income and they don't have to worry about their living and that sort of things. Yeah. Would, and then, would, sorry, uh, and then uh, the practicum was the um, uh, uh, mandated portion of the program, um, depending on what it is. So, for example, social services were um, social social work diploma or um, early childhood education diploma. Their curriculum is governed strictly by the government, and the government mandates that all students have the work practicum within the program before graduating so that by the time they're applying to be licensed as early childhood educator or social worker, then they already have those experiences. So, and yeah. it's unpaid. Okay, okay, that is a major concern. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, 
tell me about the uh, internship concept is applicable to the UG program also? Um, not necessarily. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some of the institutions might have it um, as an in listed as internship, but most of the time internship concept is applied more towards the um, post degree diploma programs or postgraduate programs. You can just tell me about the what is the academic requirement for getting admission into the UG programs, mm -hmm. and uh, what about the range of fees which student can expect. Um, annual fees, okay, yeah. Um, tuition fees, I'm so, talking about tuition yeah. fees, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, in terms of, I'll start with the tuition fees, um, simply because I already have it in my head anyway. Um, so in terms of the tuition fees, it varies a little bit depending on the, um, the, the um, subject areas or depending on the programs. But generally speaking, you will be looking at about uh, uh, $14,000 um, in tuition alone um, and that um, that is um, assuming that you have taken 10 courses in a year in academic programs um, and then on top of that we have um, various fees including some medical um, insurance fees um, that students will have to pay and so all together and including textbook fees um, student fees and also health and dental um, it comes out to be about <clears throat> just over seventeen thousand dollars a year um, in one program now one thing that we do at north island college is that we only charge what students require so basically if you have a semester when you can't do five courses because it's just such heavy load for you and then you only take three courses instead then we will charge the students only for those three courses um, or as I know some institutions vary um, have varying um, fees and they might charge you five courses even if you do three courses um, we have changed that so that we only take um, what you do um, from your pocket. Um, so that's the tuition fees. Um, some of the, tu the, just remember that some of the programs have um, international um, um, travel sometimes, uh, you know, there's field, field school attached to it and other things. So those ones might incur some extra cost on top of what you pay for annual course fees. Um, in terms of the, um, the, um, Admission requirements, sorry, I'm going back to the admission requirements. Um, so for students um, that are going into programs um, that basically requires um, statistics or accounting courses, so that means uh, business programs, uh, to, uh, tourism and hospitality programs, uh, criminology program, and then also science programs like engineering, associate of sciences, um, and uh, industrial um, automation. Those ones would definitely require um, math or science courses. In Canada, you would have to, um, in order to um, prove that you have completed up to grade 12 level sciences, you do have to have 10 plus 2 exam results um, for science courses. And if you have already graduated but do not have some of the science courses, maybe have done, you know, say biology or chemistry but didn't do physics, then you can come to us and then enroll into our Associate of Science program and then upgrade those physics courses that you've, um, you didn't take during the high school years. Um, if you're looking at um, other programs such as business or, or tourism and hospitality, um, we do also require 10 plus two exam results uh, for those. And um, the scores are dependent on the programs. Usually tourism and hospitality has slightly um, lower requirement than the other programs. Um, so, and and also depending on whether you come from state board, whether you come from um, CBSE um, or um, GCSE, um, the, the scores are slightly different. Um, so I would request that you connect with us so that we can actually give you the details on the um, exact um, percentage that you require to have. Great. Tell me about the Postgraduate programs also. What are the postgraduate programs available in MIT? Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Yeah. So we have um, four main postgraduate programs, um, two in business and two actually just one, I should say, um, assuming that most students are looking for a two year programs. Am I correct? Yeah. OK, so then three main programs. Um, so two in business are and one in tourism and, and on hospitality. So the two that we have in um, business, one is a global business management and the other one is a pre-professional accounting. So global business management is designed so that um, you go through a breadth of different uh, business courses to get um, exposed to the business program or business courses in international context. Um, so you have a lot of courses like international relations, international marketing, everything really in global business. Um, and then you also have some electives that you can choose from. So some students might take more towards um, IT related um, courses. Some students might take some marketing, human resources. So every student is a little bit different. Um, and between the first year and the second year of that um, post degree diploma program, we have an internship as a requirement. So all students will work in the industry um, and then gain some experience so that by the time they graduate, they already have some good work, re work reference and that can lead you into um, um, the further career afterwards. So that's post degree diploma in global business management. Now, the other one is pre-professional accounting. And this is especially good for students that are thinking about becoming a certified professional accountant in Canada. Um, and um, in Canada, in order to become a CPA, um, certified professional accountant, there is a series of courses that you have to do in order to um, even qualify to get into um, a preparatory program. And I'm I'm sure that there is something very, very similar as well over there. Um, and um, um, so it's designed to give you those undergraduate courses that you really need in order to enroll into what we call CPA PEP, basically a preparatory program. Um, and then so once you graduate, then you can start working in an accounting firm. And while you work in an accounting firm, you also continue on with the courses from CPA PEP and then gradually make your way towards becoming um, an actual CPA in Canada. Um, and this program also has an internship and the nice thing with this internship in uh, pre-professional accounting is that a lot of our accounting firms in our area they're um, looking for students all the time to take in to train and um, oftentimes our students get employed by them and continue on with their um, journey towards becoming a CPA and so um, it's a really successful program and any student who is strong in accounting or have math background, um, those students will be really encouraged to go into that program for um, future sake. Um, and then the third one is the Global um, Tourism and Hospitality um, Graduate, um, sorry, Advanced Diploma. And so that one is also a two year program. It also has a four months um, internship in the middle of the program. Um, so students have to work really, really hard in the industry um, and because it's a, a full four months full time work um, that students come out with really good experience and also really good connection. And um, in, in tourism and hospitality, our area is perfect for it because we get tourists throughout the entire year. We have a lot of resorts and um, outdoor um, um, establishment. So um, if anybody is interested in that um, after the degree program, that would definitely get you towards um, um, being successful in uh, Canada. Uh, I have read somewhere your professional accounting program is such a way that it exempts the nine paper out of 12 of CPA. Is it true? Sorry, say that again. Your professional accounting course, two year program, postgraduate program mm -hmm. that gives the uh, relaxation of a nine paper out of 12 paper of CPA. 
Yeah, so it's a it's a um, so all of the courses that are in CPA are um, oh sorry all of the courses that are in our post degree diploma are the preparatory courses towards um, becoming a CPA. Yes, yeah, because in order to be um, to enroll into the prep um, program, you first have to have a business degree program, um, and then also you have to have um, the specific um, courses. Um, um, completed before going into the PEP program. Yeah, so we try and give you those specific courses. Mm -hmm. You could just give me the basic academic requirement and IELTS requirement for postgraduate degree program. Postgraduate program, yes. yes. So for postgraduate program, um, it depends on the semester as to what the um, grade requirement is and also English requirement is because with the um, with the two programs, the Global Business Management Post Degree Diploma and Pre-Professional Accounting um, Post Degree Diploma program, um, there are semesters when we go into what we call selective admission. Um, right now, we're not doing selective admission, but um, for September, um, for September and January 2021, um, sorry, September 2020 and uh, January 2021, we're not doing any selective admission. But um, um, so, in the absence of selected selective admission, um, what we require is IELTS um, 6.0 um, overall with no band less than 5.5. So that's a minimum requirement. And then for getting into the program, we require, um, of, of course, um, three or four year uh, bachelor's degree program completion. Um, and we will definitely verify that. Um, and also um, for pre-professional accounting and global business management um, and um, um, glo uh, sorry, global tourism and hospitality, we require um, certain math skills. Um, so students can submit their high school um, transcript to meet that requirement, or if they have higher level math um, at a university level, then they can submit that and we can evaluate that um, against our admission requirements. And also for a degree program, we require the uh, minimum percentage completion of 65. And so if you do not have that 65% in the bachelor's program, but they have, um, uh, it, but if you have a higher percentage completion in say master's program after that, then we can take that um, in lieu of the 65% um, in bachelor's program. Now, in selective admission requirement, uh, selective admission, we do require slightly higher um, scores. So for IELTS, we would require 6.5 instead of 6.0. Um, for academic requirements, we require 70% instead of 65%. And so, yeah, it varies a little bit, but for now, um, it, there is no selective admission. You could just clarify, what do you mean by selective admission? Um, so we go through a selective admission um, in those programs when um, there are um, when we experience an extremely high volume of application. So when we op first open up an application period, um, and then we look at the number of applications that come in over the first few weeks and find out that we have more applications that we can possibly offer the seats for, then at that point we switch over to selective admission. We notify all the applicants and then um, we place any students that do not quite meet the selective admission requirements but do meet the regular admission requirements into wait lists um, and then so anybody who meets the selective admission requirements would get in first and then and everybody else who are in between will um, sit in a wait list for a little bit until we can figure out whether we have more seats available for those students Tungo, not having math in class 12 is the common phenomena among the Indian students. Mm -hmm. Like commerce students, science students, they generally don't have the math. Instead, some students, those are planning for the engineering program, they do have the math. So, what are the programs you could offer for students not having math in class 12th? Mm -hmm. Or Courses having the mass requirement have the some other alternate adjustments so that a student can join. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so for undergraduate students that do not quite have math, um, we do have an option of um, placing students into our Associate of Arts program. And what we do is that we, um, we test the students on their um, math level to figure out which upgrading um, courses they should go into. And they can upgrade the math while they take the courses required for the program that they, they want to go into, whether it's business program or some other programs. Um, so that's one way for them to um, do upgrading. If they are um, extremely confident, um, then occasionally students would pass the exam but um, generally not likely. Um, for post-degree diploma students, um, if they do not have the math, unfortunately, we cannot accept them into, um, into our program. Um, however, um, we do work with Rosedale Academy. Rosedale Academy has um, online high school um, um, approved Ontario um, curriculum. Even though we're in British Columbia, we do accept the curriculums from across the across all of Canada. And Rosedale Academy offers OSSD, the Ontario Secondary School um, Diploma, and their courses. So if students are interested in coming to NIC, but they don't quite qualify, um, and they know that ma their math needs some brushing up, then I would recommend taking the courses through Rosedale Academy, they're extremely reasonable in their fees. And also um, they are taught by um, Ontario certified teachers. And so by the time they complete the courses, um, they are ready to go into um, um, any of the, uh, the courses that, are, that require math as the uh, prerequisite. Yeah, so um, that's another option for both undergraduate and postgraduate students. Dilgo, I am coming back again to the postgraduate program. Mm -hmm. Just give me the range of tuition fees which you offer for the postgraduate program in LA. Oh, yes, definitely. Okay, let me just quickly pull it up for you just so that um, I don't make any mistakes in telling you the, uh, the fees. Okay, so um, I'm going to take global business management as an example. Um, for that program, um, we are looking at a slightly higher tuition fee um, in the first year in comparison to second year. But second year is just like I said before, just over seventeen thousand uh, dollars. For the first year, um, it costs students about um, eighteen. It, about 18,500 is the fees that they will be looking at. And one thing that I have to mention is that I do have the, um, the book fees calculated into that fee and the book fee um, being about $2,000. But oftentimes students would opt to get an online book as opposed to um, paper books. Um, and that makes it a little bit cheaper for them. Great. Tell me about the what are the intakes available for Indian students in NIC throughout the year. Yes. Yeah. So we do rolling what we call rolling admission. So we accept students throughout the year until the deadline comes. So for September, we are still accepting students into our program. Um, and um, we have all of the programs open with the exception of um, social work, um, early childhood education, and a couple of other smaller shorter term programs. Um, but otherwise, the majority of academic programs are open. Um, and um, uh, the deadline for the application is July 15th. So that's the latest that you can apply and still, you know, maybe manage to come into Canada in time with the study permit. Um, otherwise, we do have January intake open as well already. And so January 2021, we currently have um, uh, Associate of Arts, Associate of Sciences, um, both, um, sorry, all of the undergraduate and postgraduate uh, business programs. And we also have um, uh, tourism and hospitality undergraduate and postgraduate programs open. So um, it depends on how comfortable students are with COVID-19. I understand that some students are extremely you know, motivated to come to Canada in September. Other students want to take a little bit safer way. And um, we 
totally understand the students' um, concerns. And so if you do have any issues or questions as to which intake they should apply for, um, then we encourage them to contact us and uh, connect with us so that we can um, guide them in the right direction. You could tell me about the one of the specialized culinary programs, undergraduate programs that you, you do. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we do have culinary um, business operations program, um, one year and two year programs. And it's a really nice program because um, it combines a practicum oriented culinary training with business courses. And uh, with the assumption that most of the students after they become a chef, at one point they would have become a restaurateur, maybe a manager in a restaurant or some sort of a, a hotel. And so um, our hope is that we're able to provide all of the training upfront um, and so that once you get to those uh, positions, then um, you know, students will be able to um, um, move smoothly into the, the, the newer positions um, in the career. And um, generally speaking, we start those programs, um, one year or two year programs in September, but uh, we assume that um, September 2020 is going to be a little difficult for most students and it would probably be very difficult for us to offer the training in a way that's comprehensive because we still have physical distancing that is a requirement in classrooms as well and so students will be most likely looking at um, September 2021 for that intake yeah but it's a fantastic program if you go into a two-year program you'll be cooking almost every day and also you will have two co-op terms so in both summers um, in between first year and the second year and also after the second year is done you would still go back out into the community and cook in the restaurant for four months so it's very intensive but you do get a lot of training and it's a fantastic program great this is the last question sure uh, so if a student wants to come to NIC, what three things you would be highlighting about the NIC? Why a student should come to the NIC? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, for India students, definitely the first, um, first thing is that um, you get, um, you're going to be living in a community where the living expense is much lower in comparison to bigger cities. And you still have um, option to connect with a lot of people in the community. Our community is extremely open and they're accepting of international students. So if you're thinking about establishing connections for later employment, including co-op internship, um, and also, you know, saving the money um, in, on living expenses, then our community is definitely the best one to um, come into. Um, and uh, we try and make sure that our college is not too big in size so that we grow together with the community. And um, right now, international students, we have about 15% um, of the entire um, student body. And we want to continue to be that way so that we can provide students that authentic experience as well. So that's number one thing. I think the num second thing is that um, um, a lot of students um, worry a little bit about ranking and such, um, and I want to tell you that um, the quality of instruction that you get at North Island College is extremely high. Many of the instructors have or still do work in other um, universities such as UBC, SFU, UVic, um, and so you get really top quality instruction and also for programs that are career oriented many of our instructors are still connected with the industry working in the industry and bringing everything that they learn on a daily basis back into the classroom and so um, you're getting um, the most um, up-to-date um, curriculum and um, at quality level of instruction. So that's number two. Um, and then number three, I would say me, because you get to see me. No, <laughs> just kidding. 
<laughs> no, the third thing is the um, definitely uh, student support. We have a lot of student support available. Um, I know that we've kind of moved off to a bit of an online learning right now, but even then, we're still offering a lot of um, advising support online or over the phone. Same with the uh, tutorial support and other um, academic support or mental health support. And um, we have more staff. Um, um, than um, you can imagine in a small college like ours in comparison to the, the you know, massive colleges and universities in the province or across Canada. And so if you want to make sure that you have um, safety and the support of the people and the community, then definitely you will receive all of that here at NIC. Thank you so much, Jinko. You have given lot of lot of information about the NIC <laughs> thank you and